What causes dandruff? And how do you get rid of it? Here in this abundant forest, Malassezia is equipped with everything it could ever need. Feasting constantly, it's in paradise. But wait, what's this? In fact, Malassezia is a type of yeast that lives and dines on all of our scalps. It thrives in the warm, oily environment created by our skin's natural oils. Surprisingly, about half of the human population will find that this yeast's activity leads to dandruff. So, why do some people experience more dandruff than others? And how can it be treated effectively? The microscopic colonies we live with. We might consider ourselves individuals, but we're really colonies. Our skin hosts billions of microbes, including bacteria, fungi, and yeasts. Malesthesia yeasts make themselves at home on our skin shortly after we're born. Follicles, the tiny cavities that grow hair all over our bodies, are particularly popular living quarters for these yeasts. They are drawn to these hideouts because they contain glands that secrete an oil called sebum, which lubricates and strengthens our hair. Malassezia has evolved to consume our skin's proteins and oils. Given the abundance of sebum-secreting follicles, our scalp is one of the oiliest places on our body, and consequently, one of the yeastiest. As these fungi feast on our scalp's oils, dandruff may form. The science behind dandruff formation. Sebum is composed of both saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. Saturated fats pack neatly together, while unsaturated fats have double bonds that create an irregular kink in their structure. Malassezia consumes sebum by secreting an enzyme that releases all of the oil's fatty acids. However, they only consume the saturated fats, leaving the unsaturated ones behind. These irregularly shaped leftovers soak into the skin, prying its barrier open and allowing water to escape. The body detects these breaches and responds defensively, leading to inflammation, which results in the characteristic itch of dandruff. This defensive response also causes skin cells to proliferate in an attempt to repair the damaged barrier. Typically, our skin's outer surface, or epidermis, completely renews itself every two to three weeks. Epidermal cells divide, move outwards, die, and form the skin's tough outer layer which gradually sheds in single cells too small to see. But with dandruff, cells churn out quickly to correct the broken barrier, meaning they don't mature and differentiate properly. Instead, they form large, greasy clumps around the hair follicle that are shed as visible flakes. Effective Treatments for Dandruff This is how Malassezia's voracious appetite and our body's reaction to its byproducts lead to dandruff. Currently, the most effective way to eliminate dandruff is by using antifungals in shampoos that are applied directly to the scalp to kill malassezia. Regular use of these shampoos can help maintain a healthy scalp environment. For those who experience dandruff, it often comes and goes as sebum secretions vary throughout one's lifetime, often influenced by hormonal changes. But despite the fact that malassezia colonize everyone to a similar extent, not everyone suffers from dandruff. Some people are more susceptible, leading scientists to investigate further. Understanding susceptibility. Why do some individuals get more dandruff than others? Is there a genetic predisposition? Is their skin barrier more permeable? Researchers are currently exploring whether people with dandruff lose more water through their scalps potentially triggering their skin cells to proliferate more rapidly. Furthermore, researchers are learning that malassezia communicate with our immune system using small, oily molecules called oxalipins that regulate inflammation. If scientists can find a way to inhibit inflammatory oxalipins and boost anti-inflammatory ones, it could pave the way for new treatments. The Benefits and Risks of Dandruff Interestingly, Scientists are also investigating if there's any benefit to our relationship with malassezia. Some hypothesize that dandruff, which can be uncomfortable and embarrassing, may create a reliable, oily food source for the yeast. However, 
It's essential to note that dandruff isn't contagious or a significant threat to our health. In fact, Malassezia seem to excel at defending their territory, our skin, from other, more harmful microbes like Staphylococcus aureus. Conclusion So, while scientists have unraveled many mysteries surrounding this common condition, it must be said, dandruff remains a head-scratcher. Understanding the interplay between our skin, the yeasts living on it, and our body's responses can help us manage and treat dandruff effectively. If you're experiencing persistent dandruff, consulting a dermatologist may provide further insights and tailored treatments. Remember, managing dandruff is not just about the symptoms, but understanding the underlying biology that contributes to it. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to like subscribe and turn on the notification bell, so you don't miss any new videos. Let us know your thoughts about this video in the comment section down below and feel free to stay and enjoy it until the end. Also make sure to check out our next highlighted video, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.